implement the cycle procedure, which takes in a scheme list of non-empty values and returns an infinite stream that repeats those values in order. OK, here's the skeleton code, and let's analyze it. Already, we see that we have two functions, cycle and width. But we're only asked to define cycle, and the define width line is indented. This should clue you in that width is a helper function. The indentations show that this whole block codes for the width function, and we just have one line left for cycle. If we have a helper function, then it'd be pretty silly if we didn't use it. So it's extremely safe to call it at the end here with our list s, and that's it. So you should recognize that this question is really about this block here, wh where we code the helper function. But even if you couldn't figure it out on your first time, be sure to write this last line, because you'll still get points for it, and it's pretty simple. So width is really just an if statement. Remember that scheme is an inherently recursive language. So if we're creating a new list, we're going to need to look at the base case and the recursive case. As always, our base case is if our list is empty. But that doesn't really make sense, since we know our list is always going to be non-empty. If you're having trouble figuring it out, don't panic. Let's move on to the recursive case, and through that, hopefully we can find out what our base case is. In general, if you're having trouble with questions that have conditionals, if you're stuck on one case, moving on to another can help you think of solutions to the parts that you're stuck on. And moving on to other cases can also potentially net you some easier points. Don't get stuck in the idea that if you can't answer the majority of a question that you shouldn't answer any of it. That's just not very good test-taking strategies. So on to our recursive case. If t is not empty, well, we know that we're going to have to return a stream. And we're not returning it here at the bottom. So let's write const stream in parentheses on both ends of the line, because we're going to be needing to fill it in later. The first element of this const stream is going to be car t in parentheses. I hope you understand the intuition. And what's going to be the second element? Well, let's go over what we need to understand. First is that the second element of streams are not supposed to be explicit. Instead, they're always something that's calculated when called on. The second thing we need to understand is that because of this, streams always contain streams, not pairs as we'd otherwise think. So the second element needs to return a const stream. But what do we have that does that? Well, we have cycle, and we have width. So which do we use? It's a pretty good question, since we know that both are eventually going to return a const stream. We're actually going to use width. I'd encourage you to figure out the reasoning, but if you can't, then at least remember that within a helper function, it's generally safer to call the helper function itself rather than the function it was defined in, because you might change some variables that you wanted to keep the same. And we're going to call it on the rest of the list that we pass into t, because we need to iterate over it somehow. But wait a minute. If we iterate over t, that means t is going to become empty at some point. What do we do then? Well, now we can tackle the base case. If t is empty, that must mean that we've returned our initial values, right? That means that we'll need to go back to the beginning of our list. We can't use t because it's empty. But remember that we passed in the whole list when we passed it into cycle. We can refer to it with s. So in our base case, we're going to have to call s on something that returns a const stream, and we'll use with. And now we're done. You can use the scheme interpreter to see that this really works.